Globaler and its applications in handwriting recognition. Uh, so here is the outline of my talk. I first will start uh, with uh, our motivation and how we, uh, how handwriting recognition problem led us to uh, use Lejeune Sobolev polynomials. And then I uh, explain uh, the kind of operations uh, our package supports. Uh, then I'll give you a tour around our uh, package and see how uh, one can compute, uh, represent handwritten characters uh, in, with the Lejean Slobolev polynomials. Uh, orthogonal polynomials have many applications uh, in different areas, uh, such as uh, face, speech, speech emotion, gesture, and handwriting recognition. We are particularly more interested in the problem of mathematical handwriting recognition on uh, pen-based devices. Uh, pen-based math is different than uh, natural language recognition in several ways. Uh, so math formulas normally have a two-dimensional nature. And, the, uh, and you, it, uh, it's not the case that you can avoid the appearance of subscripts and superscripts in your uh, formulas. Uh, we have a large set of uh, math characters, and they appear in different sizes and locations with different meanings, and uh, different people tend to use their own subset of symbols. So that means that whenever there is uh, an ambiguity in distinguishing between characters, there is no mathematical uh, math dictionary to consult. Uh, one of the important uh, questions in the area of uh, handwriting recognition is how we represent our handwritten characters. Our idea is to treat a handwritten uh, characters as curves and not just a collection of points. Uh, our I main idea is to represent those curves as coordinate curves, and which are truncated in uh, orthogonal series. This uh, representation has uh, different, several benefits for us. Uh, first of all, this representation is compact, meaning that only a few coefficients are needed uh, to represent characters. It gives us uh, in, uh, useful uh, geometrical insights. Uh, this representation gives us a metric, and this metric on this uh, set of characters, and this metric can be used in the recognition phase. And then um, we have such representation. We are also able to compute properties of uh, pairs algebraically and not just numerically and by uh, relying on uh, heuristic parameters. This representation is also device independent. That means that uh, the resolution of the device is not important. When it comes to uh, recognition between characters, uh, normally what we see here, like a similarity, like uh, being, when you compare two curves, when the area between these two curves, curves is a small, this a small error does not mean that th these two characters have the same shape. The, same, the problem uh, comes from the fact that the corners of these two characters are not at the same places. Uh, one way to address this problem is to work in a jet space and um, force the coordinates and their uh, derivatives uh, uh, to be close. Uh, for this purpose, we use Lejeune Sobolev inner product, which is defined uh, in this way. Uh, since we want just the coordinates and their derivatives match, so we work in the first jet space, meaning that we consider these, uh, we let these mu i's for i greater than one to be zero. Uh, this parameter mu1 can be uh, chosen experimentally to maximize the recognition rates. Uh, by applying Gram-Schmidt process on the monomial basis with respect to this uh, inner product, one can compute the 
uh, Legend Slavolev uh, polynomials. Uh, one of the interesting parts of this uh, kind of representation is that it, uh, it enables us to compute uh, approximations of our characters uh, in real time. Uh, to, uh, and I'll explain uh, soon that how this can happen. Uh, this proposition uh, suggests that for computing the coefficients of the Legend Sobolev approximations of coordinate curves, we can compute the, these quantities, one, uh, moment integrals, and then multiply the matrix of moment integrals by the matrix C and recover these coefficients. And uh, to understand how this uh, method helps in uh, real-time uh, series coefficient calculation, I should point out two uh, key factors here. The first factor is that this matrix C is independent of the problem, and that can be computed. And the second factor, which is more important, is how we compute these moment integrals. So when a, a handwritten character is being written, uh, then uh, at each point that we receive a new data point, we can compute these quantities, the moment integrals, up to the point, up to that point that is already received. That means that at the time uh, uh, our pen is up and the handwritten character is complete, it co is complete we have computed uh, these quantities, like moment integrals. So that means that to recover the coefficients of the coordinate curves, uh, we need to apply one matrix multiplication. Uh, looking at, like, uh, representing characters as, uh, as curves, Parameterized curves also helps us to get more uh, geometrical insight about our uh, characters rather than when we just uh, look at the characters as a collection of data points. Uh, what happens is that here by having the representation, now we are able to compute for this case the critical points and we can put the critical points at, as uh, on, the, on their own places as where they sh supposed to be. And this can be, this, uh, the process of computing critical points can be done by finding the roots of the derivatives of the coordinate curves. And uh, so now here, uh, the problem is that as we all know, changing from one basis to the binomial basis uh, introduces a uh, round of errors. So what we would like to do is to avoid a change of basis to the monomial. Uh, so here, this proposition uh, gives a method for computing the derivative of a polynomial in a Legend Sobolev basis by a matrix multiplication. This matrix D uh, is actually pre-computed and it's independent of the problem. Uh, also, when uh, uh, here this proposition shows that the roots of the polynomial of the polynomial f in the John Stobelev basis coincide with the eigenvalues of the matrix B. Uh, this matrix B is a generalized companion matrix. In some contexts, it's also called a comrade matrix. So this part H is fixed for uh, any polynomial f, but this part should be uh, computed based on the coefficients of uh, our polynomial. And uh, <coughs> then we have the polynomials in the legend Sobolev basis. One can compute the monic GCD of uh, these uh, polynomials by solving uh, a set of uh, Diophantine equations 
These dear fun time qu uh, questions um, are coming from a comrade matrix. Uh, we have developed a uh, package, the Jean Sobolev, to be able to apply arithmetic operations in the Jean Sobolev basis. The functions are uh, relying on uh, linear, linear algebra arithmetic operations like matrix multiplication and uh, solving the Fontaine equations. So here I would like to explain how some of these uh, functions can be used. Uh, here, when we, this figure shows that uh, a Legendre Sobolev polynomial of degree n and with respect to parameter mu can be computed by this command s. Uh, we can also compute the Legendre polynomials uh, of a specific degree with at least uh, two ways. When here, uh, we have set the mu to be zero. And uh, Legend Sobolev polynomials of degree n can also be computed as functions in mu. Uh, Legend, the Legend Sobolev uh, package also has capabilities of uh, changing the basis. Uh, when a polynomial is given in the monomial basis, we can compute its representation in the Legend Sobolev basis with this mu by using monomial to LS matrix. We, what we do is simply to get the uh, coefficients of f in monomial basis and multiply by the output matrix of this comment. Uh, again, uh, we can use the same uh, routine to compute the Legend representation of a polynomial in the monomial basis. The only difference here is that mu should be set to zero. Furthermore, when we have a polynomial uh, in the legend basis, uh, we can use the command legend to ls matrix to compute the legend so the representation of that polynomial. And finally, when we have the Legend Sobolev representation of a polynomial, we can use the common LS to Legend matrix to find the uh, Legend uh, representation of that polynomial. Here, what we should pay attention is that this mu here should be the same as the one mu that was compute, used to compute the, uh, to update the Legend Sobolev representation. Uh, in this figure, uh, I have computed the derivative of a polynomial f uh, by first computing its uh, Legend Sobolev representation, and then uh, this command uh, derivative in ls does a matrix multiplication and computes the coefficients of the derivative. Uh, here, uh, I computed uh, the roots of a polynomial of degree 12, which is randomly generated by Rand Poly command of Maple. Uh, again, uh, after computing its uh, Legend Sobolev representation, uh, I compute its corresponding comrade matrix. And then the roots of f are computed by computing the eigenvalues of the matrix C. Uh, here, uh, this week in this figure, we compute the GC, demonic GCD of two polynomials that are given in a Legend Sobolev basis, uh, and the GCD also lives in the same basis. And as we said before, uh, the, the theory behind this uh, uh, relies on computing some different equations. So uh, now I would like to uh, switch to our own problem. And I'd like to explain how one can uh, approximate handwritten characters using the Legend Sobolev package. Uh, for doing so, we have developed another package called handwriting recognition testing. 
its uh, uh, routines are uh, relying on the Legend Solver package. Uh, our handwritten characters are uh, presented as uh, uh, data points X, Y, and T, where uh, X and Y are coordinate points with timestamp T. Uh, the first step uh, towards approximating our handwritten characters is to compute arc length at all of the points we have uh, received a data point. Uh, to the, the command for doing so is called a normalized uh, arc length. And then the next step is to compute moment integrals. Uh, this is done by this command where, as we saw, arc length is the table containing the arc length at each point corresponding to the x and y coordinates. D is the order of the approximation. Um, and L is the total uh, arc length of the character, and num steps is the uh, number of the total number of steps in the numerical uh, integration for computing the moments. Uh, now we need to compute the conversion matrix from moments to Legend Sobolet basis. This is done via uh, this command, which is part of the Legend Sobolet uh, package. And then uh, we also need to compute another scale, the rescaling matrix N. Uh, we uh, multiply this matrix N and C and get a new conversion matrix N. Uh, the reason for doing so is that we want to rescale our approximation from this interval 0 to L to be in minus 1 and 1. And what we should note here is that this C can be pre-computed as we saw before, but this matrix N is uh, dependent on the, uh, the parameter L, which is arc length, and therefore it's dependent on the character. And we wouldn't know this until uh, the, pro the handwritten character is completely written and the pen is out. Uh, now we are ready to compute the approximations by multiplying the matrix M we just computed and the matrix of uh, moment integrals. And we also can uh, recover the, the monomial representation of our uh, coordinates in this way. Here I have plotted uh, the approximated curve in dashed lines and the handwritten curve itself in the blue. And uh, here we see some uh, red dots. These are uh, the corresponding uh, some of the critical points. And the calculation uh, here, the, these calculations are done by the Legend Sobolev package. Uh, this figure shows the backward error analysis for computing the uh, critical points of, uh, handwritten curve, of the handwritten curve we just saw. Uh, here we have considered uh, different values of uh, parameter mu. And one observation we can have from here is that, for example, if we compare the error rates for the Legendre uh, basis and uh, the Legendre Sobolev basis with mu uh, 0.5, we can see to get the uh, same uh, accuracy, we need to have uh, two <coughs> uh, more digits of uh, precision. And uh, in this figure, we see the uh, average residual error uh, uh, for approximating, uh, for computing the critical points. And uh, these calculations are done with respect to different uh, precision. So what this suggests is that we at least should uh, use uh, triple uh, precision uh, to compute the critical points for 110 characters.
So, uh, if you ask us what uh, we are, we do, is that to answer that, I would say uh, we work with uh, interests instead of uh, a collection of sample points. This gives us uh, this representation gives us useful uh, geometrical um, uh, insights, and uh, it also it has caused the, uh, the faster uh, uh, algorithms for giving the representation of handwritten characters. And with the new operations we have now in uh, the John Scoble basis, it seems that conversion in and out of monomial bases uh, appears unnecessary. Our packages, the Lejean Stobolev and handwriting recognition testing, they are both uh, publicly available online at application center of the uh, MapleSoft website. And yeah, that was my talk and thank you for your attention. First of all, I really, really like seeing this uh, uh, companion matrix pencil for Alessandro Sobolev. That's new to me, uh, and I do a lot of things with companion matrices. Um, but that said, I'm going to say something uh, that's more software engineering related to that, which is if something is useful in one context, then, then it's simple, then it might be useful in other contexts. And so you've got a new package or a new routine called Comrade Matrix. Whereas, in fact, in, in Maple, there's built in the companion matrix, which handles multiple different ba bases already. So I would highly recommend that, that the contents of Comrade matrix get migrated inside companion matrix. So the, the Comrade colleague, uh, I know there's one other one, are, are names by which this kind of thing are known, but it just hides them from uh, Google search and stuff, so I, I would also recommend not using Comrade Matrix, just oh, okay. generalized companion matrix pencil in this, in this issue. The other one is the differentiation matrix, that's new, and I, I appreciated that as well. That's, uh, that's kind of cool, and I need to follow that up. Uh, oh, the other software engineering thing. So you, you're taking polynomials apart, getting their coefficient vectors and doing other things. I think there's a package of polynomial tools written by somebody in the room that has a model for, uh, for, for how, how to do that efficiently at getting the coefficients in and out. So these kinds of things are also useful to, to uh, uh, redo. Um, I finally had a uh, question about one of the numbers on there. Which is, you had resid Thank you so much for computing residuals. Thank you for being the back there. <laughs> yeah, I always remember yeah, 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 yeah. the yeah. way of course. So you had a residual on there that was 0.012, and I went, oh, that's way too big. Mm -hmm. But then later you talked about scaling. Yes. So what were the size of the coefficients in the in the polynomials that you did computing the residual? They were about 10 to the 13th or something. Oh, uh, let's see. So the scaled residual was probably quite small. Earlier on, there was a slide with residual was 0.012. It's yeah. one of the first things. Not this one, probably there this one. Yes. Yeah, 0.012, I thought, well, that's a huge residual. But what are the size of the coefficients in, in F in there? Uh, this is F. Well, they're not so big then. So this, uh, th 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 that needs investigation. Yes. That particular thing needs investigation. But the scaling is a serious issue in, in, a, in a number of these, these kinds of things. So. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Uh, you are computing uh, GC directly in the Legend uh, Sobolev basis, right? Yes. Uh, do you have an idea of the complexity? Uh, so most of the same number of operations as in, uh, in the classical. Uh, and no, no, no. I uh, like uh, one part. Uh, like there is a part that I have not investigated. Like because we don't want to change the basis, then there is a yes, method. Okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. I understand. But in that case, um, does it looks like? Uh, 
sequence of remainders. Sequence of remainders? Yes, uh, like a classical GC, but in another, in another basis. Do you compute uh, divisions of polynomials? Uh, no. Not? So how do you get GCD itself? Uh, the GCDs are uh, computed, like the coefficient, we compute the coefficients of GCD by um, solving some Diophantine equations. These okay. Diophantine equations are taken from the rows and the columns of some matrix. Okay, so this close margin expression, which was, uh, do you have an alternative to compute, uh, for example, eigenvalues? If, if you are computing a, a kind of sequence of uh, remainders, then in that case you have for three uh, kinds of strong sequence or something like that. But if you compute directly the coefficient of the GCD, uh, uh, I understand that. Uh, did, did you did you try also other method to uh, for computing the, the roots of the polynomials or just the eigenvalues of the companion uh, matrix? No, just the eigenvalues. Okay. Yes. Um, if you, if someone draws the same character that you recognize, you know, the, the, so the end result is the same, but the direction of drawing or the order of drawing is completely different. Is your algorithm going to fail completely, or is it going to be big enough? Uh, for like in my experience, sometimes it's been able to recognize that character, and sometimes not. Uh, and Could I like, add to that answer uh, in the application for. Uh, so this is a little you know, beyond what Maurice was working on. But the, uh, for each style of writing character, like if you write an X like this, or if you write like that, the stroke order uh, and the direction of writing is important. So for you might have five different character classes for lowercase x. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, some benchmarks out there for uh, recognizing handwritten characters and they usually use machine learning. So I'm just wondering, out of curiosity, if you think uh, yours could be that, or that's a, yours is for a completely different application, where it uh, takes into account the direction and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that uh, we discussed that we should take this uh, into account. Like, we are uh, discovering around uh, this to see, like, uh, which uh, way of, like, do we really need to uh, differentiate between uh, the ones that are like uh, should be uh, consider the characters that are the same uh, but written in different directions in separated uh, with separated labels or not like this is something so that you want to you, you didn't consider so perhaps I can I can help since I've been doing more on the recognition side the uh, uh, the uh, machine learning uh, methods, uh, the usual neural networks and so on, will require quite large training sets. And in order to develop, um, uh, because uh, with, with mathematical handwriting, New York C might look <coughs> a lot like somebody else's, say that for example. And so having um, a personalized handwriting recognition is something that's interesting. And for that, you don't want the user to have to generate large set training data. So methods that work with sparse training sets are particularly interesting. And so this method uh, will uh, give nearly complete linear separability of classes with very few support vectors. Of course, there's always an interesting, can we tune it up with more data as people are writing? That's a very interesting question. But right now, our neural network is depth one. <laughs> 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 shallow, shallow. So, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, would your answer be that for a small data set, this method works better than machine learning, but for a larger one, machine learning would be it, or? I would guess the answer is yes, but I can't say for sure, because mm -hmm. we never tried it, because just that one looks at training for this, this method, you need 10,000 samples, and we might have seven. And so we never even try. No. Oh. All right, thank you. Thank you. <coughs>